So Jesus lived many, many, many years ago, um, but his spirit lives even now in our world and in, in our church and in the lives of everyone who, who follows Jesus and, and serves Jesus in this church and in all of the churches throughout the world, in the whole big church. That's, that's uh, where the Holy Spirit, the spirit of Jesus Christ is. So what we're about to do is something really special about the Holy Spirit. We're going to pray 
that God will, will help Olu grow up with Christ's life, with the Holy Spirit, in his life, in his spirit. And we're going to pour the water on him as a way of, of helping all of us to remember that that's what God promises. God promises to pour his Holy Spirit on us so that the life that we can live isn't just our own lives. It's the life that Jesus has for us to live. And so that's a big work. And any of you who've been baptized before, that's what we were doing when we baptized you. We were hoping and trusting that you were going to get um, um, raised in such a way that moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas and all of your church friends would help you learn more and more and more all the time about God and about Jesus and his love for you. So um, we're going to do that in just a moment. But I wanted to make sure you, you saw what maybe other people wouldn't see. Holy Spirit is going to be with us in our worship and in Owen's baptism and helping him to grow in the life of Jesus Christ. So I'm going to ask you a question as part of our service in just a little bit, and I want you to answer with me. Okay? So I ask you to be his friend of the Holy Spirit and help him to learn more about Jesus. Okay? Thanks. I'll stay here. Actually, I need some help. Just see how warm it is. teaching them to obey everything that I commanded you. And remember, I'm with you always, even to the close of the age. Hear also these words from Holy Scripture. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. The promises for you and for your children and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord and our God calls. Obeying the word of our Lord Jesus and confident of the promises that he reminds us of, we baptize those whom God has called. In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death and unites us with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the body of Christ, the church, and are joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. So let us remember with joy our own baptisms as we celebrate together now this sacrament. I have questions for uh, Jessica and, and Ken. Uh, do you desire that your son be baptized? And relying on God's grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith and to teach that faith to them, please? I have questions for the children. You see, Owen, he's a lot smaller than you are, and he will look up to you. So will you promise to be his friend and to help him learn more about Jesus if you will say you will? Thank you. And a question for the rest of the church. Do you promise to do your part? in Owen's nurture and faith, teaching him by word and example, and standing with him and his family in uh, all of their living, in times of joy and in times of challenge, that, that through your living into community with them, we may all grow into the full stature of the body of Christ. If you do, please say amen. Amen. 
Let's join you now. Most holy and gracious God, we praise you for the gift that we celebrate now, the, the sure knowledge of your saving love for us in Jesus Christ. And you have proclaimed that through the ages, and to your people you have made it known uh, through uh, the stories of Scripture, and so often in Scripture through the image of the waters, from the beginning when your spirit moved over the face of the creation, uh, the deep brought forth order from chaos to the time in which you brought your people safely through the waters of danger and the Red Sea, to the time in which Jesus himself was baptized in the River Jordan and, and accepted his mission of being your son and leading in spirit, even to the waters of his own death and resurrection, you have called us to recognize your saving love in Christ through through water. And we pray now that this water, this water that we have poured into this font, would be for Olin the water of baptism into the life of Jesus Christ. Bless it for this purpose and bless us in this work that we ask through Jesus our Savior. Blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and abide with you now and forever. You are sealed over through baptism to Jesus Christ. The gift of life in Christ is conferred just like that. Graciously, mysteriously, wondrously, in community. See what love the Father has for us, that we all may be called children of God. And so we are.
be planning us, but you know what? We get to do more. As we turn to the Holy Scriptures, let us turn first to God in prayer. We ask the Lord that your Holy Spirit, that same Spirit in which we have baptized, would now illumine our hearts with the truth that we would read from your word. Help us to hear and to follow your voice. We pray through Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is from the 43rd chapter of the prophet Isaiah. It is a word that God spoke to a nation in exile in Babylon. When they were in deep distress, there was a word that God spoke to them to tell them not to fear, but to trust. So into that crisis of exile, God said these words through the prophet. Hear God's word. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I've called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honored and I love you, I give people in return for you, nations, in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up. And to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Our Old Testament reading for today.
we continue to, to hear Jesus' teaching, this story picks up at the end of Jesus' teaching. And the evening, after a full day's worth of Jesus' instruction to his followers, from Mark chapter 4, starting at verse 35, our gospel for this day, hear the word of God. On that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The scene picks up after a day's teaching that Jesus and his disciples are accomplishing. And uh, we get the sense that there's a great crowd sufficient to, to come up with a, a better way for everyone to hear. Jesus gets into the boat on the lake shore of the Sea of Galilee where they are and is sitting in a boat and teaching to the crowd that is assembled there, a kind of primitive amphitheater by which everyone has a sight line and a chance to, to hear the words. And after that day, Jesus, after a full day, let's say, Jesus tells his disciples, now let's go to the other side of the lake, the Sea of Galilee. It's evening. It's after a full day's work, and they head out nonetheless. In the same boat, the same boat that has been in his pulpit, is now the, the scene of his travel and of this crisis that occurs in the lives of of Jesus and his disciples. At least it's a crisis for the disciples. The story is remembered, I believe, by the church, remembered from generation to generation until the time in which uh, Mark and two of the other gospel writers record the story for us. It's important because the questions that it raises and answers are questions that are important for the church. And the affirmation that it gives about the ultimate care that God would give to the disciples of Jesus. Well, that's something that the church continues to need to hear. In looking at the story this time, one of the things that occurs to me is that you can get a lot from the story just by tracking with the the dialogue, and the dialogue is almost exclusively questions. Jesus gives an instruction to the wind and the waves, peace be still, but everything else that's said is in question form. And those questions reveal what's at the heart of the experience that the disciples have. And, and what's at the center of Jesus' concern for them, and also what it might be for us to discover when we bring our questions about God into our crises as they happen to us. You know the story. We've, we've heard it. You've read it several times this week, I'm sure. Read it. Jesus is in the boat with the disciples. A great windstorm suddenly uh, arises, and the waves are swamping the boat when the disciples uh, enter the, the scene in terms of dialogue or action they are bailing water I imagine and Jesus is not Jesus is actually asleep asleep in the stern 
on the cushion. There's only one personal flotation device, and it's fishing. And Jesus got it. They woke him up and they said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? It's an urgent situation. The, the disciples who would be fishermen, a, a, a number of them, would have known how dangerous the, the water is and how suddenly a storm can, can rise up on the Sea of Galilee. They would have been perhaps a bit leery of the whole idea of going across to the other side of this large uh, inland lake at the middle of the night when when they're already tired from the day's work. There's urgency in their voices, and it's understandable because the physical circumstances in which they are, they are uh, struggling are circumstances that threaten their own existence. The boat, their, their sole means of, of flotation and of security, the boat is taking on water. The storm is winning the contest. And Jesus, Jesus is, is not only not helping, Jesus seems to be ignoring the whole thing or missing it. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? The question betrays first uh, a false conclusion as to how this story is going to turn out, but also question that, that sometimes occurs to people in the midst of crises. The question of whether there is a God and if there is a God, then what kind of God is there? Because we're going through this, God must not care. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? It's, it's worth our understanding that the story reveals the answer to that. That Jesus does care. And that they are not perishing precisely because they are in Jesus' care. They're in the, the reach of his power. And that Jesus is pleased to exercise his sovereign power to do the saving work to which he's been called. That's how the story goes. They discover the answer to their question. But we had a discussion during Sunday school about why Jesus is asleep. How could Jesus be asleep in the boat and, and go through this? Well, what's the significance of that? And I wonder whether that detail suggests the experience of so many people going through a crisis with faith in God, but wondering why God hasn't shown up in sovereign power to change the circumstances. It's a good question. And what the story demonstrates is God's power to do precisely that in and through the word and work of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus gives a command to the wind, to the waves. The, the verb is rebukes. Jesus rebukes the storm. Invites it, commands it to stop. Peace. Still. And it does so. It obeys. And in, in doing that, what Jesus dramatizes for them and demonstrates for the disciples, and for us who read the story, is that Jesus is no mere teacher, though that's how they address it. He is not only a teacher. He is the one in whom the very power of God in creation is vested. And we learn elsewhere in the scripture that, that uh, Jesus is the, the word made flesh. That Jesus is, is at the beginning with God. Jesus is the word. The word was with God. The word was God. And all things came into being through him. So that the command of God at the beginning, let there be light. Or let there be water. Let there be land. Those commands came from God in Jesus' voice. That same voice speaks into these circumstances here. And we can trust into our circumstances as well. 
with actual power to change the situation. It's a faith that we are invited to claim as followers of Jesus. Jesus invites us to take that path, to understand that question as well. Because his question back to the disciples, read to them and to us, is why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? These disciples have traveled with Jesus. They've seen his power. They've listened to his teaching. They've heard and welcomed his authority. And yet when the test comes, when the crisis occurs, their behavior betrays a trust in the destructive power of the storm rather than the saving power of God. Their behavior proves where their faith actually is. Jesus invites them, invites us, to understand the full dimensions of the faith that we have when we follow Jesus. That, that we are joining ourselves to the one who is Lord of the universe. The one in whom all things came into being. And the one whose purpose is salvation. And so when we join ourselves to Christ, we are given into that kind of power. And we are invited to discover that power when the crises arise in our own lives or in the life of the church. Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? For Jesus, it's, it, it's more than merely the academic question of whether our minds ascribe to the belief. It's whether our lives live in trust that there are underneath us everlasting arms holding us. And that by devoting ourselves to the cause of Jesus Christ, we we align ourselves with the, the victorious power in this universe. So that regardless of the crisis we go through, and the circumstances which affect us, even the gravest threats, we are still God's people. And because of that, eternally safe. It is an invitation we're invited to. The, the question is the disciples at the end, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey? Jesus is more than a teacher. He is the one whom the wind and the seas obey. Wind and sea and storm and, and water being a sign of the kinds of threats of disintegrating chaos that always seems to threaten us. And in our world, we feel that threat very vividly. We read the newspapers and, and we see the, the danger that is on the horizon as uh, a military uh, dictator in North Korea um, plays a very dangerous game of brinksmanship. And, and our nation must understand its responsibility and respond appropriately. We remember, don't we, that feeling of encroaching chaos when, when the planes hit the towers or the Pentagon on September 11th, 2001. How it was that, that not merely were those buildings attacked, but somehow our nation was attacked and we personally felt unsafe and unsure, the ground beneath our feet all of a sudden shaking. It's in such crises in which fear wells up within us that we are invited to recognize that even the, the power of fear and the threat of our disintegration, our pulling apart, our undoing, that threat is not more powerful and the love of God in Jesus Christ, the sovereign power that rules this world and holds it in love and grace. It's, 
it would be nice to say that following Jesus inoculates us against danger. It is not the case, and that's not what I am saying. Rather, I think the story is in our scriptures to encourage us because followers of Jesus are called oftentimes into danger. That following Jesus means that we engage the injustice in our communities. We speak truth to power. We stand up for the oppressed. We do not countenance those forces or those powers that would wield themselves against the, the defenseless. We put ourselves in harm's way because that's where Jesus goes. In this story, Jesus sends the disciples to the other side of the lake. And that other side of the lake is an entirely different region. The region of the Gerasenes or the Gadarenes. They are Gentiles. They are unclean. And when Jesus gets off of the boat there, he's met by, by a, a, a man who is, who is tormented by a spirit that has rendered him incapable of communing with other people. He is self-destructive and he is other destructive. And the destructive power that's at, at loose in that region, Jesus goes towards with his disciples. To engage, to demonstrate that every square inch of this globe belongs to God. So please don't understand me to say that the mission of Jesus inoculates us against danger. It is not that way at all. Rather, it is the promise of God's love that sustains the followers of Jesus. When we go, where we go in following Him. May the church of Jesus Christ and all the baptized in our ministries know and discover that power. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In response to God's words of faith, let us affirm together our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. If you're able, please stand. Christian, what do you believe?
And as we do that for ourselves, so we claim for the situations in our world. We do pray, oh God, for the, for the international threats that are currently a part of, of our world. We ask for clear-headedness and, and wise judgment and safety to rule over this threat with North Korea to rule over the election of chaos in Kenya, and to rule over the refugee crisis, which our world continues to experience with those from Syria. We pray as well, O Lord, for our own nation, and, and for especially the, the ugly, hurtful, hateful, spirit that has arisen in our life together. We pray, Lord, for peace and care and love to rule over the hatred that has expressed itself this weekend in Charlottesville, Virginia. We pray for you to raise up leaders willing to speak truth, to show love, to quell violence, to work for peace. Strengthen your people, O oh God, to do your work, to follow your will. And bless our church, we ask. These who we've uh, lifted to your care for their healing, all who grieve and suffer, bless the Lord those who carry heavy burdens, Give them your rest. We pray all of this, trusting in the strong name of Jesus, our Savior. We pray in his name and, and as he has taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Freely we have received. Freely now let us give and worship God with the giving of our time.
you for the privilege of serving with you, of devoting ourselves and our livelihoods to your work in the world. Thank you for the offering that we make now and the sign of our commitment and our devotion. We pray that you'll take every bit of it and use it for your glory, accomplishing your work in the world and drawing us into deeper connection and commitment with those to whom you call us to serve. We ask all of this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
and our arms underneath us. And as we go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be ours now and always. Amen. Mm -hmm.